worship this morning. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. I'm ready. I'm ready to see the good hand of God this morning. Amen. I have some announcements to make as we get started this morning. Next Sunday evening, next Sunday evening, our service time for evening service will be moved to 5 o'clock because um, it gets dark earlier and the, the light, we run out of light and some, last year we did this and it worked real well. So Sunday evening service will start at 5 o'clock uh, next Sunday. So in the, that will go for nine weeks. When the time changes and everything flips around, then it'll go back to regular schedule. So uh, we're excited about that. Hey, I like it because we get to have church longer. You know, sometimes Sherry tells me, hey, we got to get out of here. And I'm like, oh, no, it's just 630. We've got all night. We've got another two hours. Let's stay. So uh, if anybody's needing to come and stay a couple, three hours on Sunday night, come. We'd love to have you. Uh, all right. And next, uh, next is our Wednesday night meal. It's going to be January 30th. That's in a couple of weeks, right? So we're excited about that. And barbecue, I think, is on the menu that night. So... We're excited about that. Baptisms. Uh, somebody had asked me about this, and baptism, if you're interested in being baptized, we're going to talk about that, and uh, come see me, and we're going to do that here in a few weeks, so we're excited about that, but at this time, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and I'm going to ask Brother Randall Gillum if he'll come and pray with us. Good morning. Good to be here this morning. Good to see each and every one of you. And if you happen to be, be visiting with us this morning, we're just grateful to have you. Hope that you will continue to join with us here at the Manchester Church of God. <clears throat> this morning, before we open prayer, we do want to visit our list of needs. Uh, this morning, we'll, we want to pray for Mary Omer. Um, whose request is this? Mary Omer. She's recovering from... Uh, some kind of a procedure. But we just want to remember uh, Mary this morning. Certainly God knows what's going on with her. And uh, we just want to remember Mary this morning. Also this morning, let's remember Chase Tenpenny. This is Sister Beta's grandson. Sister Beta used to come to this church regularly. Most of y'all, or a lot of you know who she is. But let's pray for Chase this morning. This is her grandson. Uh, has thyroid cancer. And is scheduled for surgery on the 29th. Also this morning, let's remember Brandon. This is Sister Barbara Walker's grandson who is in Nashville. Has pneumonia and kidney failure. Is non-responsive. Remember Brandon this morning. Let's remember Eloy Nolivos. This is a, a friend who has some family needs. So let's certainly remember Eloy this morning. God knows those needs. That's all that's important. And let's remember Sherry this morning. Is that right, Scully or Sister Scully? Okay. I'm going to say it's Sherry. This is Staria's neighbor. House caught on fire this morning. And uh, Sister Staria is not sure how she is or what the situation is there. But let's just remember Sherry this morning. If you have needs of your own, just raise your hand. God is faithful. Whatever we ask, God can do. So let's just stand this morning if you're able. And let's just go to him in prayer. He's the most powerful thing this world has ever seen. The world is his and all that is in it. And we just want to give him praise this morning. Let's just pray this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, how we praise you this morning. Father, you are our everything. Father, our trust is in you for all things. Father, our faith is in you this morning and all that you do for us. We believe your word this morning and every, every word that is in your holy word. Father, we believe it this morning and we give you praise and glory. Father, we thank you for this glorious day that you have created just for us. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here. But Father, I believe this morning it's more than just an opportunity. Father, I think you have directed our path here this morning, Father, for this specific time that we would receive all that you have for us. Father, we give you praise for who you are this morning. Father, allow us to humble ourselves before your throne room. Father, allow us to see 
who we are in your eyes, God. May we ask for forgiveness for those things which is in our life, Father, that, that is not pleasing to you, God. We ask for forgiveness this morning for iniquity. God, ask that you would clear the slate this morning, Father, and that you would indeed do a work on us. Father, we praise you for all that you do. God, we thank you for healing this morning. We, did, we believe in divine healing. We, we believe that we can come before you this morning and that we can have your audience this morning and we can bring our needs, God, and that you will touch and that you will bring forth healing. So, Father, this morning we lift those to you in need. God, for Mary Omer this morning, Father, who's recovering. God, we ask that you would extend this recovery. Father, that you would touch. Father, that you would completely heal. God, that you would have your way this morning. Father, for all of her needs, God, we're just asking this morning that you would just touch and that you would minister to Mary Omer this morning. Father, we believe in you, God. Father, for Chase Tenpenny this morning, Father, who suffers from thyroid cancer. Father, would you touch Chase this morning? God, would you see where Chase is? Would you see his needs, Father? God, would you grant healing? Father, we're going to pray this morning that this surgery is not needed. Or, Father, where you step in, Father, you do it 100%. And, God, that's what we're depending upon this morning is healing. God, for Chase, and we just pray, Father, that you would touch. God, that you would minister, that you would expose yourself this morning. Father, show how great you truly are. Father, show the, those things that you and you alone are capable of doing. So, Father, would you bring forth healing this morning. God, for Brandon, Barbara Walker's grandson in Nashville, Father suffers from pneumonia, kidney failure, and is non-responsive. Father, we're just calling upon you this morning. Father, that you would make your presence known in Brandon's room this morning. Father, that you would allow this family to draw upon the strength that only you can give. And God, that you would touch and that you would heal this morning. Father, we're, pray we're praying for complete healing for Brandon. Father, allow him to become responsive this morning. Fathers, we speak your name, God, and we turn to your power. Father, we're asking that you would open his eyes this morning. Father, that you would allow him to, to respond. And Father, that you would allow healing to begin. Oh, how we praise your mighty name. Oh, yes, give him praise and glory. We thank you, Father. Touch him this morning and allow this family, God, to feel your presence and to feel your strength and your power. Father, for Eloy this morning. God, you know where Eloy is. Father, you know the great man of God that he is. Father, would you stand with him this morning? Father, any of the issues that he might have, Father, would you show him that it's never too late, that he's a prodigal son, that we can always return. Father, I pray that you would put him on his knees this morning and, Father, whatever his needs are, that he could straighten those out with you and that he could depend upon you then to do the rest. Father, see him where he is this morning. Father, see the situation. There's nothing too great for you. Father, we just pray. Pray that this morning, Father, for him that... You would come to him, God, and that you would lead him and direct him. Father, that you would stand with him. And Father, that you would bless him this morning. Father, for Sherry, who suffered a house fire this morning. Father, it's never a good time, but God, this time of year, without a home, or certainly without one that's complete, we don't know what it is, but Father, we ask that you would stand with them this morning. God, that you would, you would grant relief and protection and safety. And God, that you would grant provision. Father, we're praying for all of those, Father, that, in, that are included in this situation, any family. Father, we just pray that you'd give them strength and that you'd give them provision this morning. 
But, Father, that you would stand with them. God, we thank you for those gathered this morning. Father, we just... Now, God, we just want to yield to your spirit. Father, we want you to have your way this morning. God, I know that you have a plan for each of us. Father, show us that plan. Show us. But God, strengthen us that we, whatever it is that you have for us, that we would just, just step right in line and go, go along with what it is. Because, Father, if it's your way, it is the right way. So, God, we just turn our lives over to you this morning in this service. And Father, just ask that you would lead us and guide us and that you would touch us with your spirit. Father, we hunger, we thirst after you this morning. We just praise you, Father. We ask all of these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the church said, Amen. Amen.
Amen. Let's do that this morning. Can we just lift up the mighty name of Jesus? Can we worship Him and give Him honor this morning? We worship Your name, oh God. We magnify Your name. We believe in who You are. We believe, oh God, in what You do. We thank You today, Jesus, for Your love that has flown down and it restores me and helps me. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Let's just give him a hand clap this morning. Thank you, Jesus. We worship your mighty name. We have come to celebrate who you are. We've come to exalt your name. Hallelujah. Name of this song is Father, will you come? Ask God to come. Fill this place.
Amen. Let's do that right now. Can we just give ourselves away? Oh, can we just hand ourselves, just hand ourselves to Him. Give ourselves to His presence. Oh, Jesus, I worship you this morning. I have come this day to lift you up. I've come this day to worship the mighty name of Jesus, to acknowledge your work on the cross, to acknowledge the empty tomb, and I worship my Savior today. I worship my Savior. Oh, I give myself away. 
Today, I say I am yours, God. Today, I make that commitment. I am yours. I am yours. Oh, my God, I worship your name. Oh, God, I worship your name. I worship your name. I worship your name. I worship your name. Oh, I need you today, God. I am in need of you, Jesus. Jesus. I'm in need of you. Amen. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. What a Savior we serve. Savior that loves us beyond what we can understand. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Turn with me this morning to the book of John. We'll look at the 20th chapter, starting with the 20th verse, and we'll go through verse 22. I want to speak to you this morning about we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. I remember one day leaving school after we picked the kids up, I told Danielle, and I said she was 16, turning 16, and I told her, I said, oh, she had her learner's permit. She went and took the little test to get your learner's permit. You can take the test, you can get it up here, but if you can't drive the car, I don't know that it does any good to have a piece of paper that says I passed the test, but I ran over grandmother, you know, backing out of the driveway. So she took the test, we got in the car, and we were, at, we were actually on Shady Grove Road out, out there in um, whatever that is called out in there. But Shady Grove, it's called Shady Grove. Mud Creek. Danielle was doing about 15 mile an hour in the car, and I told her, I said, you can speed up. She said, no, this is as fast as I want to go. <laughs> we drove probably about seven, eight minutes at 15 mile an hour, and I said, you've got to speed up. And she said, I am not. I am, this is how fast I'm going to go. What I want to tell you this morning is to be able to drive a car, Sometimes you need, there's certain skills. You need to get to a level of proficiency before we put you behind the wheel. Because you can be very dangerous in a car if you're not proficient in driving that car. Some months later, Danielle got her license and she is, she's actually a really good driver now. But here's what I want to tell you this morning is as we walk with Jesus, there is a time when he's saying, I need to put you behind the wheel. I need to let you drive this thing for a little. I need to let you drive the car. I need to put you in some responsibility here. And one of the things that he wants to do in our lives is he wants us to allow the Holy Spirit to work through our lives. But one thing that needs to take place is our walk with him needs to grow deeper. The Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not just... It's not just dust that we throw on somebody in the altar. It's not just a switch that we flip that somebody walked up behind you and they touched you in the back and they turned on your Holy Spirit light bulb. But there is a place in your life as you grow in your walk with God where you need to continue to grow and to continue to do the work that God's wanting you to do. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And so let's read this this morning, John chapter 20, starting with verse 20. The reason why I picked this is so we could have 2020 vision. <laughs> we can see clear. Verse 20 says, when he had said this, he showed them his hands. This is after his crucifixion. Jesus, Jesus showed them his hands. And he showed them his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21 says this. So Jesus said to them again, peace 
to you. Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Verse 22 says this, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. That's what he said to them. He said, you need to receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Wow, what, a, what an interesting, let me just back up just a little bit on this passage here. The disciples, this is after the crucifixion, after the empty tomb. The tomb is empty. The disciples have gathered in a room. They've gathered in a house somewhere. They're sitting in that house, and Jesus shows up at the house. He walks in the room, and at first they're a little taken back because they're like, didn't we see this guy die? Isn't he supposed to be dead? And they're a little taken back. And the first thing that Jesus says to them is, he says, peace to you. I need you just to relax. That's what he says. And the disciples then are able to receive what he's getting ready to say. This is at the end of Jesus' ministry. His ministry on earth is finished. But I find it interesting that what Jesus wants to get into, the believers, is that you need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. This is what you need. There was a day when I was not going to be able to be sitting beside Danielle in the car and saying, slow down, you have a stop sign. I need you to slow down. I, I, we went through this a few times. We were coming up to the red light one day, and I said, slow down, Danny. Slow down. And we got about probably about 30 yards from the red light at about 40 mile an hour. <laughs> the light is red, and I said, you got to hit the brakes. And she said, I am hitting the brakes. I'm slowing down. I'm slowing down. And I told her, I said, it's better for you to slow down a little bit before you get to where you have to be stopped at than to try to get there and then, you know. And my thought is, how can I leave her in this car by herself? Do you not know that Jesus is saying the same thing with these men right here? Jesus is saying, I'm not going to be in the car anymore. You're going to drive this by yourself. You will drive this car by yourself. This is one of the last times that I'm going to ride with you. I can't be in the car to tell you, turn right. You're turning right. You need to stop. put your blinker on. And now you know what Danielle does to me? We're going down the road. And she said, you changed lanes? You didn't use your signal. <laughs> and I told her, I said, when you have status like me, there's some rules <laughs> that you get to, you get privileged not to use those things. No. I'm, I'm, I'm equal status with her now. I have to use my blinker just like she does. Jesus is leaving these men. He's leaving all of the disciples. This is what, though, he wants to tell them. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. That's what he tells them. Here's the interesting thing. In verse 20, when Jesus comes to them, one of the first things that he does is when he walks into the room, he validates who he is. What does he do? He shows them his hands. In verse 20, Jesus walks in the room and he says, look at my hands. See, there's no one on this earth who had been crucified lived. There's no one who had come through such a grueling ordeal. Not only that, not only does he show them his hands, but he shows them his side. He lets them see where they pierced him in the side. Jesus validated himself to them. It's interesting because you would think because they had already had a good relationship, that that validation really wouldn't be necessary. But let me just ask you this. When God starts speaking to you, when God starts telling you to do something, there are times where you struggle to really know whether that's God or not. Now, it's God. We know it. But, it, but for us to make the move, for us to pull the trigger, for us to step out, 
It's sometimes it's just hard to do it. And sometimes there's days when we need to see those nail-scarred hands. I need to know, Jesus, that it's you telling me to do what you've told me. God, I need to know that it's you that's called me. God, I need to hear your voice. I need to understand. Remember Gideon? Gideon said, God, I'm good to do what you want me to do. But I need to make sure that it's you talking to me and not me talking to myself. And so Gideon lays a fleece out, and the fleece sometimes is more about that I am not speaking to myself, that I'm not making this stuff up. I, I don't know if anybody's ever been there before where you knew God spoke to you, and then when it got time to step out, you questioned yourself and you said, was that me or was that God? Because there are times where I want to do things. I want God to move. I want to do the work of God. But there are times where I convince myself that God has spoke to me. And I need nail scars. I need to see those scars on his hands. I need to understand. I need some validation that God is doing the work. I need validation. I want you to get this today that when he came into the room, when Jesus is going to do something that's amazing, when he's going to do something great, he it's not some kind of mystical, we're not for sure where it came from. No, Jesus walked in the room. He said, look at the hands, look at the side. I want you to know this is me. Amen. He validates who he is. He will validate who he is in your life. He will always show up in your life. He is not going to run. From you, He's not going to run from, from validating and, and exposing and just showing who he is. Jesus will always validate himself in the time of need, in the time of ministry. This shows how important this is. It would be real easy for him to walk in the room and say, I need you guys to do this. I need you guys to do this. I want you to understand that this is not about Jesus needing some kind of confirmation in his life. It's about us. We're the ones that need the confirmation. Not only does he do that, but in verse 21, he says this, peace be to you. This is the second time that he said it. What, what does he mean, peace be to you? He means I need you guys to calm down. I don't know if you've ever been there before and God is saying, I need you to do this. The Holy Spirit is is urging you to do something. I need you to teach this class. Hey, we need a teacher in the little kids class. We got some kindergartners in there who have run off four teachers so far, and they've marked on the walls, they've tore up the carpet, they've broke the table. Who wants to teach that class? And nobody in the room will respond, and the Holy Spirit says to you, that's your class now. And what does your mind and heart do? Fear comes over you fear comes over you God I'm not I'm not no not me God I cannot do that I am not able to do that God do you understand who you're talking to I am not able to do that and what does Jesus say to us peace be still I need you to calm down I need you to relax because what I'm getting ready to tell you is going to work it's going to happen I can do this through you is what he's getting ready to say. But what I need you to do is I need you to calm down and get to the point to where you can receive what I'm going to say. We're not always in position. Our mind is not always in position to receive what God's getting ready to say to us. There are times when God is going to speak to us and pour into us and he has to calm us down. He has to settle us down. Because what's getting ready to happen is just too much for our little carnal mind to grab a hold of. So what Jesus does when he gets into the room, shows them the nail-scarred hands, and he says, Peace be still. Peace to you. I need you to just relax. I need you to receive what I'm going to say. So I need you right now, as a church congregation, I need you to re just relax and get ready to receive what he's going to do in your life. We have, to, we have to get ready, but if we're nervous, and if we're tense, and if we're worried, we're not going to be able to do what he wants us to do. 
how many of us have talked ourselves out of what God has called us to? How many times has, have we convinced ourselves, talked ourselves, pulled ourselves out after the calling of God has been placed on our lives? I say that because I've done it several times. And so I need him at times to say, peace, peace to you. I need you, peace to you. I need you to just relax. Because what do we do? We start looking at everything that has to be done. God, you want me to go in there with those kindergartners? You know, God, did you not know they tied Brother Winston up? <laughs> they stole his shoes one Sunday, pulled his socks off. They painted his toenails. They did all this. God, do you, are you aware of what has happened in that class? Are you sure I can do this? Here's what he's saying. Because see what we do seriously, on a serious note, what we do is we say, God, do you understand my family? Do you understand, do you understand my time restraints? God, do you understand all this stuff that's going on in my life? Do you understand that, God? Do you, I'm telling you, if he calls you, he knows your qualifications. If he calls you, he knows your talents, your gifts, your level of giftedness. He knows where you're at. But what he needs is he needs us to calm down, to get ready to receive. Got a little puppy. One of the things that first thing, one of the first things that we did is we taught the dog to sit before it eats. We come out there with food, and what does the little dog do? He's out there, she's jumping up and down like she's on a pogo stick. She's jumping up and down, and I, nope, you sit. Be still, sit. You cannot receive until you sit down and behave. And now the little dog, when I come out with the food, she starts jumping up and down, and I say, Millie, sit. And she goes right over by her bowl, and she sits down. And she's sitting there, and that tail's just a wagon. I say, good girl. I go over there and I put her food in her bowl and I let her eat. But what happens to the dog if you just throw, you start pouring the food in there and the dog runs in there and, and the food goes all over the place? And then the cats want to eat their food. But this is what he tells us. He says, peace, be still. See, here's what's happening. In verse 21, he says, I'm sending you out to do something. I want to send you out to do, I have a job for you. I, there's a calling on your life. There's something that I have in store for you. But what I need you to do is I need you to understand that there's something that I'm requiring of you. There's something that I'm asking you to do. See, the truth of it is some of us can't hear the calling because we haven't sit down yet. And we haven't got to the point to where we can hear his voice. I, I want to hear his voice. I want to hear what he has to say. And then in verse 22, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what he says to them. He tells them, he says, receive the Holy Spirit. He speaks that to them. Receive the Holy Spirit. Why would he do that? Why does he say this? Why does he say this? is it about? I mean, is it just words? Is it just words? I mean, I could come over here and say, Victoria, you know, nice boots this morning. Those are, those are words. But I don't know that it's going to help her in any way. Jesus, is he just speaking words? Or is there something here that needs to happen? There is something here that needs to happen. And what needs to happen is these men are getting ready to go out and do ministry. And there is an enemy that is going to confront them with such violence and such intensity that if they make wrong moves, if they cannot hear the voice of God, if they get to a place where they're lonely and they quit and they fall to pieces, what he says is I need you to be full of the Holy Spirit of God because the enemy is going to come against you and fight you and struggle with you and there is going to be temptations and and just difficulties and depression and struggles on every hand. But what you need to succeed and win this battle is the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Wow. Here's what I want to tell you. 
we live in a day that depression is more common than it's probably been in the, in the history of the world. We live in a day where confusion has become the norm. We live in a day where people are so unsatisfied. We've got more than we've ever had in our life. We, there has never been a day in our society that we have had the stuff that we have. I was talking with my dad sometime back, and my dad said we had a rim off of a buggy, a metal rim, and we had a stick. He said, when I was about seven years old, we would run that rim down the road and we would, we would add a little stick and we would make that rim roll with that stick and we would run down the street with it and we would turn it around while it was rolling. We would slow it, turn it around and bring it back down the road. Man, what amazing toys they had back in those days. And there was a little pause there, and I said, what, what are you doing again? I, I'm, I'm missing. I'm trying to understand what you were doing. I, he said, we were playing, but it was like, we, instead of, we didn't have a football. We didn't have a soccer ball. Nobody owned cleats. He said, but we had found an old wagon rim, the rim that goes around the wheel, that holds the wheel together. We found that, and we would roll that down the road with a stick. And we'd turn it around and bring it back. My thought was, that's all you had? We've got more than we've ever had. There's a battle that's going on for happiness in all kinds of people. Are you satisfied? Are you happy? Are you content? Is there joy in your life? I tell you, what we need more than anything is we need, we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There is such a struggle going on in our world. Here's the thing it is. It's a little bit like we're being lulled to sleep and we haven't eaten in days. We haven't eaten. It's been days and we haven't eaten. But we're being rocked to sleep. No, 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 you don't need to eat. Just go to sleep. And we're so content to go without the very thing that Jesus, one of the last one of the last times that he meets with the disciples, what he tells them is, boys, don't go out without the Holy Spirit. Don't go out there without the empowerment of the Holy Don't go out there. Don't go out. It's almost like a man going into a sword fight. And he's saying, you better take your sword and your shield with you if you're going out there because everybody else has got sword. Here's, the, here's what I'm trying to tell you this morning is that there is a spiritual battle. There is a spiritual fight going on all around us. And if you're not in that spiritual fight, if you don't have the tools and the ability to fight that spiritual fight, what will happen is you will slowly lose that spiritual fight. You'll lose it. So what he tells these men in that room before he leaves them for good is that you need the Holy Spirit flowing through your life. You need the baptism. You need the Spirit of God working and flowing through your life. You need to be able to hear God at times. There are times when it's going to be crucial that you hear God. You've got just days to make a decision. You've got just moments to do something. If the iron is hot, strike it. But we can't hear God. We're so confused. There's so much going on in our life. I can't hear God. No, what I need is I need the Spirit of God continually every day flowing in my life. I need the Spirit flow. And so when the Lord, when the Lord speaks to me, the Holy Spirit takes that big megaphone and he sticks it on my ear and he says, do you hear God speaking? And I say, yes, I hear him. I need to hear God speaking to me. Let me say this. 1994, I got my first, 
my first level of license in the Church of God. In 1994, I graduated from Lee University with a bachelor's degree. I was so excited. Today, I have somewhere around 27 years of experience in ministry, something like that. I can say absolutely today more than ever that I can't do this without the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it. I can't do it. Do you know that one of the trends that's happening in the United States is there is a lack of pastors. There is a lack of ministers. Some denominations, pastors will serve two to three churches. They'll do a service in Tullahoma at 9 and then be in Manchester at 11. And some churches, they'll go on to another town and be there at 3. Why? Somebody, the battle was just too much. And they gave up. What I want to tell you is, in my experience in doing this thing, I need, I want, I'm in desperate need of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I need the working of the Holy Spirit in my life. I have to have it. I have to be able to hear God. I need the gifts of the Spirit flowing through my life. I need discernment. There's times in my life when I need discernment. Just, just a, a, a few days back, I had to make a decision on a purchase. And these things come up and you got to make a decision. I made a decision on a purchase. And the interesting thing is there was like three different options what I could do. And this is not a spiritual thing, but at the same time, it affects my finances. And so I make a decision on this purchase. And then after I made the decision, I knew I made the wrong one. Why? Because I'm a broken creature. I'm imperfect in what I do. I, I don't always know what to do. I want to tell you that God never misses. I make mistakes. Sometimes I don't do, I don't pick the right one. You know, any, many, mighty mo doesn't always work. Inky binky bonky doesn't work. Bubble gum, bubble gum in a dish doesn't work. It does sometimes. It did when I was seven. But when I was 47, I did that a few times and I made the wrong decision. But what always works is the Holy Spirit to say, this is where and this is how and this is when. And what I need, though, he's always saying, this is when, this is how, this is where. But what's happening to me is that I'm not always listening. Why? Because I'm not where I need to be in the, in, in, with the Holy Spirit, and I need the Holy Spirit flowing in my life. I need the Holy Spirit flowing in my life. Acts chapter 3, verse 4. Let's look at that right quick. Acts 3, verse 4. This is the story of the disciples coming in to the temple, and there is a crippled man in there who has been crippled from birth. There is no cure for this man. Peter and John are coming in, and verse 4 says, And fixing his eyes on him, talking about the crippled man, with John and Peter said, Look at us. Verse 5 says, so he gave them his attention, expecting to re receive something from them, expecting some money or some kind of goods in some way. And verse 6 says, then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. Man, that was disappointing, wasn't it? He said, I don't have any money. You're not getting money from me today. And I'm sure the guy went, they was like, yay, oh. And then this is what he said, but what I do have, I give you. What I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth, rise and walk. And he 
took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Man, what an amazing thing. Here's what I want to tell you. In this story right here in Acts chapter 3, Peter doesn't have something mystical, magical in him to make this man whole or healed. He doesn't do that. But it is his faith in God, it is the creator of this world that puts healing in this man's body in Acts chapter 3. But it is because Peter is hearing and he is sensitive to the, to the unction of the Holy Spirit that when the Holy Spirit says, touch this man, his healing is here, touch this man. It is Peter who hears the Holy Spirit, who works, and all of a sudden the experience that this man and everybody who's in the room, they see the hand of God. They realize and see that God is alive, he's active, and he wants to do things for man. Amen. So what do we do? We understand that God is always, continually, nonstop, wanting to do ministry. He always wants to do it. He always wants to touch. He always wants to heal. He always wants people to be strengthened and, and to be renewed. He wants that. Here's the issue. The delivery is the problem. The delivery a lot of times is going to come through us. We're the postman. The struggle we have is sometimes we are not ready to deliver. Sometimes we don't know that we're there. Sometimes we don't even know that we're supposed to be there. And so he tells Jesus in John chapter 20, he tells Peter and John, receive the Holy Spirit. And what happens in Acts chapter 3, because they received the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 3, they, there was a miracle that took place in their life. Wow. Here's what happened. They changed the world. These men changed the world. One of the things that, one of the reasons why they changed the world is because they were full of the Holy Spirit. They allowed the Holy Spirit to flow through them. And they were always attentive to the voice of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was flowing and living in them. Now here's the truth of it is. We are no different than these two men in Acts chapter 3. No different. There is nothing different in us than what is in these men right here. Paul the Apostle was a murderer. He had deliberately, consciously, willfully killed people for the cause of Judaism. And it was God who brought him to salvation in Jesus Christ. But then there was a next experience that Paul had that he received the baptism of the Spirit. And it was Paul who did a great ministry for years. Why? Because he allowed the Spirit of God to flow through his life. Was it that Paul had something, he had some kind of touch of Zeus or something, some kind of mystical something? No. He didn't have that. What he had was he was listening to the voice of God. And he changed the world around Here's what I came to tell you today. You can change the world around you. The world around you is a struggling, broken place if it's similar to mine. I mean, there's good things happening, and then there's not so good things happening. There are times when the Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, this is what you need to do. When 
without fail, every time I do it, it always works. It always works. Here's what I came to tell you this morning. Jesus has validated himself. He's in the room. His scars can be seen. Not only that, but he says to us this morning, peace be still. Peace to you. That's what he says this morning. Peace to you. Because you know what happens? When we get ready to make some kind of change in our life, we get nervous. We get concerned. Here's what I want to tell you. The Holy Spirit wants to flow through everything. But what has to happen is we have to, our walk with God needs to grow deep enough that we're ready to handle what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life. God is not going to pour the Holy Spirit out on someone who cannot handle that. And there are times in my life where I have felt God pull back the Holy Spirit. And I had to, in my life, draw closer to him to go deeper with him. Not that the Holy Spirit was taken off of my life, but that it would be, I would, I would feel this where it became more of a struggle for me to hear the voice of God. Here's what needs to happen. He wants you to be filled with the Spirit. Would the musicians come this morning? He wants us to be filled with the Spirit. He wants you to draw closer to to Him. In our fast, one of the things about fasting is is it is it draws us closer to God. It allows us to hear the voice of God. It allows us to be more attentive to the spiritual things. And somebody may be saying, you know what, I don't know that I need this. I don't know that this is really for me. I don't know that I don't know that I, I need this. No. See, you need it because there's an enemy out there that will continually, continually press against you, fight against you. The desire of the enemy is to kill, steal, and destroy. How great it is, is when you have, when you go and you do that funeral, it's an elderly person and you can stand in that pulpit and say, they lived 82 years and they served God faithfully and there was great things done in their life. God is evident in this person's life to stand over that casket and to say, this man, this woman, that God was evident in their life. And everyone in that room acknowledges that the works of God was done through that person. That's great. What's troubling is to go and do that funeral and to have an 82-year-old man and he attended church for years. And you can't say great works were done through this man for the kingdom of God. You can't say it. You would like to. Sometimes we do it because people want to hear it. It's not necessarily the truth. But today we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to say, God, take me deeper. God, I'm not satisfied where I'm at today. I'm not, I, I'm not satisfied where I'm at. I, I'm serving God. I'm, I love God. I'm, I, I love my country and my family and, and all those things are good. But today, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm going to make the decision to ask for a deeper walk. Today, I'm going to, I'm going to make that decision that there's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm not live in some wild life somewhere that nobody knows about. I, there's none of that going on. I have no known sins in my life. 
but I want a deeper walk with God. That's what I want. And today, I make that decision to say to God, God, today, I want to I want to go deeper in my walk with you. I want to go beyond where I've ever been. I, I want to go beyond. This is what he's saying. Receive the Holy Spirit. And if that's you, if you can pray that prayer, if you're saying that, that's your prayer this morning, would you say to him, I want to receive. The Holy Spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to flow through my life. That's what I want. I want the Holy Spirit to flow through my life. Oh God, when somebody stands over my casket, and I'm 82 years old, will you, I, my prayer is that they will be able to say, this man, through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, changed his world. Through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it on my own. I can't do it on my own. I cannot. I can, I'm, I'm going to tell you this morning. My testimony is, is I cannot do this job without the Holy Spirit. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot go to the level of what God is wanting to do in my life without the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, Charles Johnson, the reviver, somebody may remember him. He sung a song that says, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Man. Oh, man, I love that old song. I want to say this morning that I can't even walk without the Holy Spirit. I can't, I can't do this thing without Him. I need, the Holy, I, I need the Holy Spirit flowing through me. I have to have Him directing my hands and my feet and my mouth. I need Him. Oh, would you stand with us this morning? Get my step away so you can use me. I get my step away. I get my step away so you can use me. I get my step away. your hands and say feel me with your spirit oh fill me with your spirit God let your spirit direct me let your spirit touch me God will you start a fire burning in my soul will you start a fire burning deep in my soul. Oh, God, will you do that with me today? Oh, God, do it in me. Start a fire deep in me. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. 
If you need prayer this morning, if, the, if you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you, burning in your heart, oh, just to receive the Spirit of God, would you come and stand up here this morning? If you need prayer, whatever it is, but I want to give a special invitation that if you feel that urgency, God, I want to go deeper. I want to go deeper. If that's burning in your heart, I want to go deeper. I want to know him more. I want to know him in a different way, in a stronger way. I want to meet you in this altar this morning.